16 of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. The Gospel of our Lord. Threshold song as found in your bulletin insert. The threshold song, good enough.
during the season of Lent, and this last week of Holy Week, we focused on growing gardens, tending the life that is right in front of us, rather than trying to climb constantly ladders of success, or however the world defines success. This Lent season, we've been embracing good enough lives and good enough selves that are worthy of love, no matter what. We have been acknowledging the suffering that is a natural part of life. We have practiced compassion as we deal with the realities and limitations that invite us to let go of the incessant drive towards something other than our own holy and real blessed lives, regardless. Easter. It is a day we proclaim that while death is a part of life, even little deaths along the way of dreams, of love, of the way we thought life would go, even though this is a part of life, we are part of a faith that invites us to consider that the good gardener is always tending us, abiding with us, beyond any kind of death that faces us. <coughs> I invite you now to join me in the prayer, calling on God based on Psalm 114 as found in your bulletin. Holy One, you whose love endures forever, you keep offering us new life and hope, no matter what. We praise you, for you are our strength and our salvation. We shall not die, but live, for you call us into the light. Encouraging us to reach for the sun and know that we are held in the deep and rich soil of your heart. This is more than good enough for us. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. I want to welcome you today to Peace Lutheran Church and our service here this morning. All visitors are welcome. I would like to announce that last Sunday in our Palm Sunday Egg Bake that we raised $960 for Ukraine and we will be sending a check through Ukraine for Lutheran World Relief. So whatever we can do to help, I'm very grateful for your generous donations last Sunday. So can anybody tell me what's up with the weather today? <laughs> Seriously. I'm just going to say I wore my Christmas Eve best over here this morning. <laughs> it was 42 degrees on Christmas Eve this year. No joke. At service time on Christmas Eve, it was 42 degrees. We've got one to three inches of snow forecasted for tonight. We would have had a guaranteed snowy Christmas Eve. <laughs> and a white Christmas. We don't want this on Easter, do we? Oh. But it's good enough, right? We're hardy, we're hardy souls. That's why we live here. For communion today, for our visitors, um, communion will be brought to you. And then 
we will all consume the wafer at the same time, and then you'll also have a little thimble with wine in it, and then we'll all consume the wine together. And then in your pews, you may notice there's a little blue cup at the end of the pews, and then at, when we're all done communing together, that is where your, uh, the plasticware goes, is into those cups. And I would now like to invite um, any kids that want to come up for our children's message. And of course, we consider the whole congregation our children. <laughs> Just in case I need some help, quite frankly. Good morning, Adley and Quinn. Amazing. I love them up here. 
have no fears. I love you guys. So isn't that cool? Yeah, Jesus, God love. So I need you guys, I invite you guys to repeat this prayer after me, okay? I look at you. I look at you. I look at me. I celebrate. I celebrate what I see. What I see. Because God made it all. God made it all. The smooth and the rough. No matter what. You're good enough. And you know what, kids? This is where I really need you to join me now. Okay, we're all going to line up. Okay, ready, right, guys? Come on in close. Come on in close. Because we're going to tell all of these, our church friends out here, and we're going to shout this to them. Are you ready? And you repeat after me. We'll say it really loud. Okay, ready? And you. And you are a God. A God enough child. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. And for each family of siblings, I've got a bag. So, there's one. And here's a family. There you guys go. There you guys go. Bring back for you an axle. It's all good. Thank you for coming up, guys. Very brave. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> oh, Kevin. <laughs> you hit the mother load. Let us continue with confession and forgiveness as found in your bulletin. Easter is tricky when it comes to faith. We come for the happy ending, the, and then they live happily ever after. The resurrection story proclaims hope over despair and life over death. Yet we know that life continued and continues for us as a story of spiking heartbreak moments that are not forever fixed. The nature of being created for love is that we will always hunger for more and that there is never enough life and love to satisfy. And endings are often too soon. But perhaps a good enough faith is one that moves through the chronic nature of being incurably human with an eye for resurrection moments that assure us that this good enough life is worthy of our amazement. I invite you to imagine this silence, the deep seed and shoot that is growing within you, yearning for light and life. Hear this compassionate word from the prophet Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the fear of isolation and anguish at endings inviting us to a community and creativity for birthing new life, unexpected life, unending love. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven, even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels sitting in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the foot. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? 
She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have lain him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where they have lain him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator. Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Amen. The Sabbath meant burial preparation had to wait. You're not allowed to work on the Sabbath. So as soon as the clock passed the time, Mary Magdalene went straight to the grave, to the tomb, to the last place that she had seen Jesus. But when she arrived, the stone had been removed. And she takes off and goes back and finds Peter and the beloved disciple. And they all race back together and they confirm her worst fear. Indeed, the body has been taken. And yet, the bed has been made. The piece of cloth that swaddled Jesus and his death had been folded, and the cloth that had been on his head neatly folded and set apart. But they did not understand, and still in grief, the men didn't linger. They headed home. Mary didn't leave. She stayed, posted like a soldier, keeping watch. This first Easter morning, was far from being perfect. It was shrouded in mystery, <coughs> bewilderment, mistaken identities. Was this a good enough first Easter? The disciples returned home. But Mary Magdalene comes back, peers inside the tomb again. This time the tomb's not empty. But she doesn't see who she's looking for. Instead she sees two people. Why are you crying? A rather heartless question to somebody standing in a graveyard. She tells them what's wrong. They've taken him. And turning to leave, she bumps into a man with dirt underneath his fingernails. And he too asks her, Why are you crying? Through tear blurred eyes, she mistakes him for the gardener and begs to tell her where the body might be. What a strange detail. The resurrected Christ is mistaken for a gardener. Maybe it's because he stole the gardener's clothes, right? Since his clothes have been stripped and gambled over. Maybe Jesus looks like his dad. The first gardener who tended Eden. Maybe Jesus looks like the new Adam, the head gardener for the new Eden and the new earth and heavens that are coming. And maybe this gardener looks ready to cultivate new life, to pull us towards resurrection from the own, our own tombs. Or maybe this gardener looks like he knows hope, Hope that Mary desperately needs to hear. Now, a gardener knows the kind of hope it takes to sow a seed in the ground, <clears throat> to cover it with the good, juicy manure, to leave it be for months, trusting 
that something will be born out of this single buried seed. But the first step, you have to bury the seed. And a seed only reaches its potential when things look the most lark, lost, the most dark, and the most hopeless. That's when the real work for the seed is beginning its work. Gardeners are delighted when something sprouts, but not surprised. They know it can grow out of the cold, hard winter ground. Well, Leah and I are not gardeners. <laughs> Back in February, Leah and I planted a full tray of cat grass. And nothing happened. Nothing absolutely happened. And we had planted it in plenty of time for Lent. We planted in February. But Lent was upon us, and we needed to do something. Because we had thought of these beautiful, Leah, not me, Leah had thought of these beautiful <coughs> little tiny clay pots. And we thought out that you plant cat grass grows really fast. We had nothing. <laughs> nothing. So as a backup plan, we contacted a greenhouse in Lake Nebegaman and asked them to grow marigolds for us. They would grow fast. But nonetheless, Lent was upon us. And we needed to get these out for the first Sunday in Lent. So we put the barren soil in our little pots. <laughs> And we put together our devotional material. And we suggested that you care for your potted soil. Just maybe, just maybe, a miracle might occur. We were kidding. <laughs> we had no hope. We just wanted you, which, well, we eventually revealed that. We wanted you to tend the fake succulent and the little sheep that was in the pot. And we came back after that first Sunday, a Tuesday morning, and lo and behold, our whole tree of cat grass had started sprouting. <laughs> we were overjoyed. We called it a Christmas miracle. <laughs> but the best and funniest story, sorry, Angie, <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Liddy spent her winters down in Florida. And at one point, they were planning to go to Florida for vacation over spring break, our spring break. So not wanting Lin Liddy to be without her devotional, we were going to send one down. Well, they ended up not going to Florida. And um, Angie took care of it. What? Nothing had sprouted. And in Angie's mind, it was a succulent. Now, what do you not do with succulents? You don't water them. <laughs> But Angie's good. She threw in some water. She, she threw in some water. And Linny came home and she got her, her little clay pot. And then Linny, Linny took it, put it in sun, and watered it. And I'm sure she even talked to him. And this is Linny's. It sprouted. Another mirror. So while spring growth may be predictable to good gardeners, resurrection is not. But this gardener knows something about that. And I believe what we learned through this Lent season, we thought we were tending our cat grass. But no, all along it was really Jesus tending us. And remember, Mary, at first, does not recognize Jesus. Not until Jesus calls her by her name. What is it about that voice that feels so recognizable? The shepherd knows his sheep, and he knows them by name, and he calls them. 
John's Gospel tells that. And little did we know why we had little sheep in there. The shepherd knows his sheep by name. Calls them by name. And maybe that is what it means to be an Easter people. To hear his voice and know the divine shepherd and to have him call us by name. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And maybe this is what it means to be an Easter person. To see Christ and think gardener. Not a mistaken identity, but a tender to our very own soul. And maybe this is what it means to be an Easter person. That even as we wrapped our wrists on Good Friday, representing something we grieved, we know now this is what it means to be an Easter person, an Easter people. We wear our wrapped linen around our wrists. We wear them for Easter hope. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you now to... Nope. I invite you to get uh, uh, your bulletin insert, the one in yellow.
as Christ works for us to take root and to bloom throughout creation. Pour out your Holy Spirit, may it nurture us, even if we feel impossibly buried in the earth. Transform us, making the deserts and wilderness within us like Eden, that we might join in Christ's gardening work, tending to the world around us. All praise to you, eternal gardener, through Jesus Christ who calls us by name, and through the Holy Spirit which we take it with us, and through whose encouragement we bloom. Amen. Guarded well in Christ. We will now sing the hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises, hymn 379. And for our online congregation, I just want to say, as uh, you may have watched, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we had to use an iPhone to film, and how much I miss seeing your comments online and, and having your prayers join ours. So, Happy Easter, Christ has risen, lead out, lead into you all. And I invite you to join in our prayer response this morning with this. Your voice can call us and invite you to respond with Back to Life Again. Hymn 379. Your voice can call us back to life again. Sustaining God, your creation of bounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants. And provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. We pray especially for Ukrainian farmers as they toil in war zones. Your voice can call us back to life again. Sheltering God, 
strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Lord, there are so many needs. Sustain all who provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands, especially the women and children. Your voice can call us back to life again. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. We now name them silently in our hearts before you. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Your voice can call us back to life again. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and dis discipleship. Your voice can call us back to life again. Resurrecting God, you made us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you, and we remember with grateful hearts today. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting your abundant and ever-present mercy. Love has come again like wheat to rise again. Amen. The peace and love of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share, be well in Christ with one another. Peace be with you, be well in Christ.
do this for their members of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us of your kingdom, and let us all pray together the prayer of time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come to the banquet, for now all is ready. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. Our sending song, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, is based on Mary Magdalene, she was the first <coughs> resurrection disciple. I have seen the Lord. This song would have been on her lips. Hymn number 619, I know that my Redeemer lives. And we will sing verses 1 through 4 and 5 and 8. And I invite you to stand. 1 through 4, 5 and 8.
invite you to be seated for the blessing. You are being planted, right? A blessing for you who are being planted. Blessed are you who are buried. You who are learning to trust the timing of a tender gardener. Blessed are you who are growing. You who burst with new life, fresh creativity. Who understand the pain that sometimes comes with stretching and changing, pruning and being cut back. And blessed are you in your season of growth. You who are cultivating good enough cat grass. The God who was there all along, planting, waiting, watering, pruning, delighting. The God who pays careful attention to God's garden. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I just have to finish off with a few announcements. Rick, real quick. Next Saturday, the Luther Park Bible Camp down in Chittack is a work day. We, if you can go down there and it starts at 8, they'll use whatever help they can get. There's a wide variety of things to do, indoor and outdoor. Also, two steel sets can be used. If you have questions, please come and see me. I'll be around afterwards and I can let you know what they're up to. They'll feed you lunch too as well. Yeah, there's still a lot of wood cleanup from the tornado, what, two years ago? Yep. Should take that guy. And I must, at the end of this uh, Lent and beginning of Easter season, thank Leah. Uh, Leah had a wonderful creativity and imagination. I mean, who else puts dead? Soil <laughs> and fake succulents <laughs> and a baby sheep <laughs> and calls it good enough. Good enough. And uh, Jan for playing all of this season of plans. Thank you for being there. And um, it is Easter Sunday, and I know Lynn's going to be mortified, but today is actually Lenny's birthday. How blessed can you be to have your birthday on Easter Sunday? So Libby, you know, has been in Florida, this is her first time back with us and playing the Clavinova. So I thought the best way for us uh, to bless our Clavinova return is to send one more Easter hymn. So for Libby's sake. And then come back next Sunday, because then we'll have traditional Easter and we'll sing a lot of the old good Easter hymns. But today, uh, let's stand and rise and sing hymn 382. And... Um, uh, go in peace, serve the Lord for our online congregation.